Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys and I'm glad to be here in my study, in my home to share with you a word from the Lord and I believe it's a word someone needs to hear out there. I believe you need to hear it. I believe it's a word God will give to you and I want you to listen to it and get it because it comes from the word of the living God. It is with the, the title of the message is Praying in Jesus Name. Praying in Jesus' name. The Bible teaches us to pray because God hears and answers prayer. But it teaches us that we must pray in the name of Jesus for him to hear. And the reason for that is <clears throat> we must be redeemed. We must be born again and become a child of God before we can call him Father and expect him to hear the prayers of his children. And that new birth comes through Jesus Christ who took our sins with us to the cross and died upon the tree for you and me and rose again and is interceding for us in heaven hallelujah so when you pray in the name of jesus christ god hears god hears now the bible teaches in john 14 this word that jesus said whatsoever you shall ask in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified in the son you see whatsoever you ask in my name i'll do it that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And so you see, prayer, real prayer should come in the name of Jesus for the glory of God the Father, and we should depend upon it because Jesus Christ will make it so. We pray in His name, and He's there at the throne of God interceding. So we need to recognize the importance of praying in the name of Jesus. Another thing is that uh, when you pray in the name of Jesus, we, we ask this question, why should we pray in the name of Jesus? Because it will bring joy to your heart. The Bible teaches that, uh, that uh, we need to see that. He said uh, in uh, John the 16th chapter, Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Now ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. And so your joy comes when you see your prayers are answered. Your joy comes when you're able to, to lift that burden off your heart and leave it with God in prayer. Your joy comes when you know you have the opportunity just to praise God and share with God your love for Him and for your neighbor. Let the Holy God direct your life, Christian, and learn the joy of the Lord is your strength. And it comes when you pray. When you pray, that's one reason we ought to pray. Another reason we ought to pray to God in the name of Jesus is because there's life in the name of Jesus. There's death everywhere else, but there's life in the name of Jesus. There is, these things are written, this is in John the 20th chapter, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. So you see, it's through His name we have life. And as we come to God, we come because we're alive. We pray because we're His children. We're born again. We belong to God. And we pray, oh, what a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Why should we pray? Because we have one that hears us. And we ought to pray in the name of Jesus because this is so important. We ought to ask, why should we pray in Jesus? Because He's the only one that will, that has told us to pray and the prayer will be heard. The only prayer that God will really hear is the prayer that's prayed in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in John 14, chapter, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. The only way you can pray to the Father is through Jesus. The only way you'll get to heaven is through Jesus. The only way your sins will be forgiven is through Jesus because He died on that cross and shed His blood for you and for me so that we could be redeemed and ransomed from the grave and saved from hell and have our name written in heaven. Oh, we ought to pray in the name of Jesus. When you pray in the name of God the Son, you'll get the attention of God the Father. Remember that. When you pray in the name of God the Son, you'll get the attention of God the Father. May the Lord help you see it. Number two, briefly. 
why not, not only why should we pray, but how should we pray in the name of Jesus? Well, we should pray in faith, believing. Jesus said in Mark 11, chapter, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and you shall have it. And so we must believe, believe that you receive it, and you shall have it, because God has promised it. And in that promise, there is life. There is life. There is life in Him. There is life. Over in the book of John, the 10th chapter, Jesus said, The thief comes but to kill and steal and destroy. That's the devil. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And so he is the one that has life. And the devil is your enemy. And the Lord said in Mark 16th chapter, In my name you will cast out devils. In my name I like to cast out the devil. And evil spirits when they tempt me. I get a bad thought, and I get worried about something, or I get to lust after something, or I get a bad uh, resentment towards somebody. I pray, God, forgive me. And then I pray in the name of Jesus, you evil devil of resentment, you evil devil of lust, you evil devil of pride. Out! Get out of my life. Stay out of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy One of God, go. And he goes. He has to leave. And the temptation is gone. I want you to remember this, that in my name, Jesus said, you shall cast out devils. And so we praise God. We believe there's power. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the glorious name of Christ. Over in the fifth chapter of Ephesians, we read in that word, a, a good word that we need to recognize in verse 20. And here's what it says, Give thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so here's another way to pray in the name of Jesus. Just give thanks to God in His name. Oh, holy God, thank you for my health. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my uh, shelter. Thank you for my food. Thank you, Lord, for my country. Thank you for the fact I'm going to heaven. Thank you I'm redeemed by the blood. Thank you my name's written in heaven. So many things to thank God for. But, Lord, I thank you always in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus. And learn, dear friends, to even thank Him for your troubles. <clears throat> even thank Him for your sorrows. Because that's part of it, dear Christian. We must learn that these light afflictions are working for us and for our good. To make us more like Him. To burn away the old pride that's in us. To burn away the old selfishness that's in us. And help us to be more like Jesus. So learn to thank Him for your trial and your trouble. And learn to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Learn to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, there's another good scripture. It's over in the book of Matthew. And you find it in the 18th chapter of Matthew. Jesus said, I say unto you, that if two of you agree on earth as touching anything they ask, it shall be given them of my Father, which is in heaven. Let me close briefly with this word, an illustration. Uh, a man by the name of James Stegall was a Vietnam veteran in the war. He was over there in Vietnam. And a young man, he was only about 19, a little under 20, when he was out there fighting in the trenches of the Vietnam War. And uh, somehow, he wasn't even a Christian, but he, someone had given him a little New Testament, and he carried it in his pocket, in his uniform. And he had that New Testament in his pocket. And he said one, one uh, evening, just about dark, he said that he got the feeling, oh, something, something is going to happen to me. Something's going to happen to me. I'm going to come, I'm, I, it looks like I'm going to die. He felt that death was near. At about that time, he, 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 uh, he heard a shell coming, one of the shells. And when they burst, when they hit the ground, they burst and shrapnel flies everywhere. And he knew it was coming right at him. And he dug down, he got down in his foxhole, but he knew that if it ever came over, he was gone, he was close. He said that shell landed uh, about 10 feet from him. And he saw it hit the ground, and it did not explode. And he kept looking, and it kept waiting, because it should have killed him with all the shrapnel. But he said, he finally saw the little fuse, it had burned down and went out. That fuse went out. 
and it did not explode. And he walked over to it and looked at it, picked that thing up and threw it out in the woods. It never did explode. And then he reached in his pocket, he got back in his foxhole and pulled out his New Testament. And he read this scripture. In Matthew the 18th chapter he said, I wonder what that means. When two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they ask in prayer, in the name of Jesus it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. James Stigall went home after the war. A few months later he was released to go home. And his grandmother, whose name was Mrs. Harris, called him as soon as she got home and said, Son, come see me, come see me. And so he went to see her, and she was a good Christian. And she said, uh, James, she said, the other night, a few months ago, she said, I woke up and I was just fearful, full of fear. I just knew you were going to die over there in Vietnam. I had that fear. And I called my dear friend at church, and I said, I want you to pray with me. I want you to pray with me for James. And it was, it was at night, and it was quite, quite dark, but she had already gone to bed early. It was about day and dusk, just before dark. And she said, I, I prayed, and she prayed, and we claimed this prayer, that if two of you agree on earth as touching anything they ask, shall be done of them. And I said, pray with me for James. That was the very night that the shell fell 10 feet from James and it went out and it never exploded. What a miracle. What a miracle. God hears prayer. Dear Christian, call somebody sometime and say, agree with me on this problem. Tell them your problem and pray with them about it and let them pray with you. Believe in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name. Praise God. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you wait a while before the answer comes, wait on the Lord. If it don't come just like you expected it, wait on the Lord. It's coming in the right manner. If it comes just as you prayed, praise God for it. Because God answers prayer when you pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hello, dear friends. This is Ewell Humphreys. I'm glad to be with you again to share with you a word from the Word of God, the Bible. And it is a word that I believe is important for you. A word that we need to recognize as, as God's eternal word. And it's a word I've taken from the book of Isaiah and I've entitled it, Sins Blotted Out. Our sins are blotted out. Praise God for that. If you believe in Jesus Christ, the Bible says your sins have been blotted out. And it means that they're there no more. God doesn't see them. The Bible says in the, in the uh, 44th chapter of Isaiah, I have blotted out as a thick cloud your transgressions, and as a thick cloud I have blotted out your sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed you. I blotted out your sins. Return to me. I redeemed you. You know, when anything is blotted out, it's not there anymore. And God said, I've blotted out. If God blots it out, it's gone. It's gone. And if God blots them out, it's blotted out. And listen, God forgets them when they're forgiven. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, I, the Lord your God, have blotted out your sins, and I will remember them no more. I'll remember them no more. Isn't it wonderful to know that God has forgiven you? If you believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven, all of them. And they'll never come up against you anymore. Your sins, past, present, and future, they're forgiven. Hallelujah. And you're free. You're in Christ. And you'll walk in light. And God will bless your way because you're forgiven. I love the word over in, uh, in the book of... Uh, of, uh, of uh, Philippians, the third chapter, where Paul says this, this, this is something that I want you to know and understand. One thing, I count myself not to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I forget those things behind me and reach forth into what's before me and press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so, Christian, you're to forget the things behind you. You're to forget those mistakes that you made. You're to forget all those things because Jesus has paid for all of it. He's paid for all of it. 
the Bible says over again in Isaiah, I have re, uh, I, in this scripture that I read to you just a moment ago, he said, I have uh, uh, blotted out your sins and I have redeemed you. I have redeemed you. That means he's bought you back. You were sold out by our first parents in the Garden of Eden, sold to the devil. But Jesus came down and paid the ransom and bought you back by the blood of the cross. I want you to consider the, the price he paid to buy us back from sin and to save us where God can forgive us. The Bible says in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, Jesus was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was chastised for our peace so that his stripes and by his stripes we're healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone has turned to his own way. But the Lord God had laid on Jesus, laid on him the iniquity of us all. So you see, God put all of our sins on him and they were nailed to his cross. And the Bible says we are redeemed by his blood. We're redeemed and saved forever. What a glorious thing it is to know that we are, praise God, forgiven and the sins blotted out. Christian, quit worrying about what you used to do, some mistakes that you made in your life. Quit worrying about them. God has forgiven. God has forgotten them. You forgive yourself and you forget them because you belong to God. Amen. And it's all because of Jesus who went to that cross and was nailed to that tree for you. That's how much he loved you. And so we need to love him. We need to follow him. I like the story of, told about Frances Abigail. She was a woman that uh, had a great deal of wealth and, and finally she, she found the Lord. She found the Lord and became a Christian. But one thing that convicted her, she was in an art museum one day looking at some of the famous paintings and there she saw the painting by the great artist uh, David Fettis, and it, it was entitled, Behold the Man. And in the Bible it says that Jesus was taken before Pilate, and he was tied to a post, and he was whipped, and his back was bleeding, and his body was torn and bleeding. And then they put a purple robe of mockery upon him, and said, well, you claim to be a king, here's your robe. And they, if you, a king needs a crown, and they took a terrible heavy crown of thorns and pushed it down upon his head, and the blood ran down into his face. And there he stood, Pilate said, bring him out before the people. Maybe when they see him like this and know what he's gone through, they'll say, let him go. He didn't want to crucify him because he could find no fault in him. And they brought him out and, and uh, Pontius Pilate said, Behold the man standing there with blood and thorns. But that wasn't enough. They said, Crucify him, crucify him. He claims to be the Son of God and he needs to die. Oh, praise God. He was the Son of God and he gives us life. But anyway, Francis Abigail saw this painting, Behold a man, he was standing there with the thorns looking uh, directly into the face of those who were looking at the painting, blood all over his body. And it was entitled at the body, I gave my life for you. What have you given for me? It was the entitled written at the bottom. And Francis Abigail, having been saved by the blood of Jesus, having been saved by the grace of God, she wrote that old great old hymn, that great old hymn. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom be and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee, what hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee, what hast thou given for me? Oh, my dear friends, you need to give him your life. You need to give him your heart. You need to give him your love. Let him have 
your life. He gave it all for thee. And your sins are blotted out. And you've been redeemed. And your name is written in heaven. And all is well. Praise God. I want you to know that you that your sins have been blotted out. Hallelujah. And then I want you to know that you have been redeemed. Redeemed by the grace of God. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Now, this, <clears throat> this matter of your redemption is a personal matter. It's a personal experience between you and the Lord. The Bible says over in Matthew, the 16th chapter, when Jesus came from the coast of Caesarea, uh, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say you're John the Baptist, others said you're Elijah, and some are saying you're Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? You see, that's the important thing. It's not what the world says about Jesus. It's not what the commentator says about him, or the editor, or the TV personality, or all of the false religions of the world. It's not what men say about him that's important. My friend, what do you say about him? That's important. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. So you see, dear friend, it's a personal experience. Who do you say that I am? And if you can say he's the Christ, the Son of the living God, it's because of the grace of God that you can say it. It's because the Holy Spirit's revealed it to you. It's because the Father has shown it to you, and you're born again, and you believe in God. Thank the Lord for that. Praise the Lord, you are redeemed by His blood and saved by His grace, His grace divine. It's all because He went to that cross and died for you and shed His blood for you and rose again. Praise the Lord. Dale Evans, Dale Evans said this. She said, all my life I sought for the pot of gold at the foot of the rainbow and I found it at the foot of the cross. Dale Evans became a great Christian. Her and Roger, Roy Rogers had gave her life to Jesus. I want you to know that this is a truth. She said, I, all my life I sought the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, at the foot of that rainbow, and I found it at the foot of the cross. My dear friend, some of you are seeking that pot of gold at the foot of the rainbow. You won't find it. You'll find it at the foot of the cross. Come to Jesus as you are. Believe he died for you and rose again and live forever. God bless you and your sins may be blotted out. Praise God. Amen.